Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Wes Berry believes big things have small beginnings. Today, he'll explain why. Wes, thanks for being with us today. Happy to be here. Now, your book is is entitled Big Things Have Small Beginnings, and you start out talking about the word ambition. Why do you start with that? Well, you know, ambition is really the catalyst for success. And ambition is one of those words that often people, they get turned off by it. You know, because ambition is, you know, it's got a, some negative connotations to it, and it also has some positive. And mostly it just depends how you view ambition yourself. But ambitious people are what make the world go around. Can we have too much of it? Is it it just getting the right mix like a good cake? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, you can't have so much ambition that you've got, you know, what people refer to as blind ambition. But still... Uh, you know, we've all known our fair share of couch potatoes who have no ambition. So you have to have that Goldilocks zone of ambition in order to really make things happen. And it's difficult. It's it's very difficult because it's like um, anything that you do. If you overexercise, you can hurt yourself. Well, if you you know apply too much ambition, you know you're going you may get branded as someone who who is is uh, not considerate or not understanding or isn't looking for the group to succeed. But, you know, those people who really have it the right way, they don't necessarily have the ambition for themselves, but they have the ambition for an idea or they have the ambition for a greater goal. And that sort of ambition always works a lot better than someone who just wants to be able to wear the laurel wreaths of victory uh, without earning it. That's a great point. I think it makes us feel a lot better because my my next question that I was going to say to you, what about risk? If I go out for the football team, I'll feel bad if I don't make it. If I ask the girl for a date, I might get turned down and then I'll feel stupid. Or if I ask for a raise, Um, how do we balance the two of them? Is there a magic bean someplace? Well, there is and there isn't. It goes like this. You can't succeed if you're not willing to to lose. You have to be willing to win and lose because winning and losing are part of the same game. And if you're afraid of losing, then you don't play. And everybody has setbacks. And to be honest with you, I, I, I look look at baseball, you know, uh, Babe Ruth, you know, big hitter, right? Struck out more than anybody. You you have to take the hits along with with the catches. And that's a difficult thing for a lot of people to accept. Because you're right, they, they, they feel the emotional rejection. You bring up uh, asking a young woman out on a date, you know. I, I had a good friend of mine who said to me, Wes, it's, it's just a uh, matter of statistics. Don't worry about getting rejected. If, if you make enough advances, you'll get received, you know. So it is important uh, to not let that fear of failure get in your way. Uh, it's it's like uh, Walter Hagen, uh, the great golfer, used to say, when I have a bad shot, I'm glad because I know that now I've got that bad shot out of the way. And I expect a few bad shots. So <laughs> it's hard to do, but that's the attitude you have to adapt. We actually had a guest on the show many years ago, and uh, he was kind of an average person, and people were amazed at how many beautiful dates he had. And he openly admitted, he said, I get turned down a lot, but I am. <laughs> And he said, as a result of asking, you know, I have to live with the turndowns, but I do get a lot of very nice and beautiful ladies to go out with. So that was the trade-off, and he was, of course, very willing to accept it. So I I, I guess, and I'm taking the words from your book, one of the mottos we should have with opportunity is going to come risk, and we just have to accept that as being the terms of the deal. Is that it? It it really is, and you can't, it's it's a good thing. (laughs) It honestly, got, honest to God, it's a good thing because that way you you learn how to go about things. You get back in the game. You know, it's you have to embrace the the losses as much as you embrace the wins. They're part of the same game. You can't have the wins without having some losses. Obviously, you have to try to manage them, but that doesn't mean that you have to try to avoid them. You have to embrace them, and, and, and sometimes uh, some of the biggest failures some people have are the biggest successes that other people have. 
uh, you know, Simon and Garfunkel, the music uh, team, right? You know, people make fun of, of Garfunkel because you know, Simon made it big. Hey, <laughs> Garfunkel made it big, too. <laughs> You know, I'd be happy being either one of them. <laughs> Absolutely, there's a lot of royalties coming in there. <laughs> that's right. Now, I, I think there's a chapter in your book that says your why w h y is a must know. What does that mean? And, and must know spelled uh, the, the word no k n o w. So your right. why is a must k n o w. What does you that chapter know, mean? We have to know why you want to do things. You know, some you have to. You have to understand what it is that you really want to accomplish. You know, you brought up the dating thing. You know, when I was when I was young and I was, you know, uh, footloose and fancy free. You know, I I took one of the lessons out of my book and I tried to apply it to finding uh, my future wife. You know, there you go. I wrote on a wrote on a little card. You know, uh, blonde hair, green eyes, uh, uh, five five, uh, some other numbers after that. You know. <laughs> red dress and you know what that didn't work out i met a lot of people like that as a result i put that little card in my wallet you'd be surprised how you get a little focal point of your attention on something and how it starts to materialize but i wound up meeting my wife she's not five five she doesn't have blonde hair she's a brunette she's asian uh the only things that were accurate uh, with my little card was that she was female and she had a red dress <laughs> so sometimes you have to understand why you're really writing that down or why you really are selecting a goal and perhaps that card shouldn't have been written the way it was it probably shouldn't have been it probably just should have said that i'm looking for the right kind of person that would make a good wife and a good mother and a good partner and, and you found the right person it, right so one right. way or another it worked <laughs> It worked right, but sometimes people start looking for something and it isn't what they really want, and and they don't know it because they've jumped to the to the final disposition of what they're looking for. That that's a great uh, part to bring in there because I think we all think we want the job that pays the most or the prettiest or ha- most handsome person in the room, right? But uh, maybe that's not what we really want, and uh, it, it may not be what carries us through life on the path we really want to go. Wes, at Absolutely. this point in the show, we like to remind our audience that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Our guest today is Wes Berry. He is the author of the book, Big Things Have Small Beginnings. And Wes, we're going to ask you where the book is available and if there's a website you want to tell us about. Sure. Well, it's available on Amazon. And uh, we really uh, appreciate anybody who would like to check it out. I believe it's uh, still a, a number one bestseller with Amazon. It has been for over a month now. And uh, the, our, my website, if uh, anybody wants to find out a little bit more about the book or about me, is Wesley Berry, W-E-S-L-E-Y, Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, dot com. And be happy to have you have you browse through there, uh, Wes. When I went through your book, uh, I got to I think it was chapter six, and you said you can skip this chapter if you want because it's just going to be a story about me and part of my life rather than tips on success. And I was just about to take your advice that oh, I'm going to going to be a boring story, but I read it. it. Turns out to be my favorite chapter, and I'd like you to share it with our audience because it it kind of takes us uh, through your path of success, and there's a lot of interesting parts to it. Yeah. Well, when I was, uh, you know, just very young, 18, 19 years old or so, um, you know, I was planning for, you know, to go off to college or what I was going to do with my life. And my, my father told me that if I, if I didn't stay in the business or help with the business, that it, the family business, that it wouldn't be there in a few years. Now, what was your family and business? It was a flower shop. And okay. we were doing about $60,000 a year when I got involved with it. And... <clears throat> After, you know, wanting to try to figure out how it could do better uh, than what it was doing, um, I came to my father and I had a whole list of things that I wanted to do. And he thought about what I suggested for a little while. And then he came back to me and he said, Wes, you can do anything you want as long as it doesn't cost any money. Sounds like a father, right? (laughs) It it really does. Good fatherly advice. (laughs) Especially, you know, lead me on like you can do anything you want. You know, (laughs) I'm listening to that. But that whole thing about as long as it doesn't cost any money. But, you know, I I had been blessed with some opportunities early in life that, that taught me a lot about leadership and perseverance. And what wound up happening is I, I wound up 
talking to some people and being straightforward with them. I talked to some competitors from some other cities and states and so on. And I'd say, hey, you know, we don't have any money. What's the best thing you've ever done that didn't cost anything? Now, you actually and asked you, competitors this, right? Is that what you uh, said? Right. But but they weren't direct competitors. They weren't in the same market. Okay. Like, the, 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 the fellow that gave me the most insight was from Dallas, and we were from Detroit. But I met him at a trade event. And what happened is uh, he told me about trade advertising and mark and uh, trading with radio stations and product for services and television stations and so on. So for about six months, um, it took I call every, the first of every month, every radio station, every television station in town, and they'd all tell me no. And then finally, I called one station. And the, the fellow who answered the phone, the sales manager said, yeah, you know, I've been waiting for you to call. We got a big Christmas party, and I, I want corsages and this and that, and all these other things. And the next thing you knew from that point on, I had a roller coaster of trade agreements that I signed with different media outlets. And within about a year after that, well, about six months after that, so it was a year altogether, we had changed from a, a little shop that was doing 60000 to a little bit bigger shop that was doing 600000 and eventually, I took the business to six hundred uh, to sixty million dollars. Well, let's just and, slow that down and repeat it. It was sixty thousand when your father was there. It right. went up to six hundred thousand, and right. then sixty million with an M there, right? Right, right. And that first big jump, that first ten times thing, occurred uh, in six months. It was a huge step for us to make, and um, it, that just catapulted it. To a point where, really, in the metro Detroit area, uh, we're almost a, a, a little celebrity or a big fish in a small pond sort of thing. Well, but what? then when the Internet came along, we jumped on that like mad. And when we jumped on that, we ran that up to about a six, the $60 million worth of activity. Now, I was so impressed because when I heard that you kept calling these stations for six months, basically, oh, yeah. and it, you're getting turned down, or at least poli- maybe politely, maybe not so politely from some of them, right. but right. you stuck right. with this, and it could have been like, hey, this isn't going to work, or why don't I go to college, why don't I do something different, sure. but you sure. stayed with it, and then the station said, Wes, we've been waiting for you to call, right? <laughs> That must have felt like the girl saying, yes, I certainly want to go out with you and uh, let's go to the prom and whatever else. It, it was really it was really something. In fact, we took the, the trade that we did with that uh, television station. This isn't in the book, but we ran a special on roses at Christmas time. And roses are not a project at Christmas time that anybody really wants. So we referred to them as holiday roses. And and the holiday roses that we were selling were for like six ninety nine a dozen or something like that, but we sold so many of them so fast that you just couldn't believe it in those days. And you know, later on we would have hundreds of calls that would come in at a time. We had uh, before I sold the business, I had a hundred people in the United States and over 100 people overseas working for me. And uh, the uh, volume that we were having was phenomenal. But I'll never forget when those five lines all lit up when I was young and started flashing at the same time. That but, must have been such know, a great feeling. I mean, because now it's like the ball player is getting a hit almost every time up. Is that it? Yeah. 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 Well, you know what happened, too, is, is it almost was it was a cascade effect. I don't know why, how it happened, but that six months worth of banging on those doors that I, everybody want. I had I had more trade agreements than you could imagine. You know, we'd be running uh, 30, 40 radio spots on a day uh, prior to a holiday. We batched them during key sales periods and then we ran a maintenance schedule the rest of the time. The next thing you knew, we were doing uh, plant maintenance on television shows for two or three shows that were running locally. Uh, I would be a guest on the local shows. One, at one point, I did uh, three weeks in a row on a local morning television show uh, about flowers and plants for, the, for, for Christmas. It was a Christmas uh, ramp up that they were doing for decorating. And this is all, uh, you're not paying for any of this because basically you're bartering. Was that correct? Right, absolutely. And Absolutely. so you listened to your father, you followed his advice, you did what you were told, and uh, boy, did it turn out better than gold, really. It was pretty funny. And then at that point, I started thinking, you know, the best thing would be is if I could be like the government, print my own currency. Uh oh. So we didn't, we didn't really do that, but what we did is we printed gift certificates for uh, bouquets of flowers, and we'd give those to the radio stations. 
they'd put them in their closet and they'd pass them out on the air. So we'd get a plug that way. Plus we had the currency of the, of the product that provided even more advertising for us. And now I think so our audience, what you can do. I think our audience knows why I like chapter six so much because it was such a good story. Wes, I want to find out more about those small things, but at this point in the show, we want to remind our listeners that you're listening to the secrets of success. My name is Bill Horan. The show is produced at the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Bell, and I invited you here to my hotel room to talk about your cheeks, your big, beautiful cheeks. Get your mind out of the gutter. I'm talking about swabbing them. Did you guys know that each year 20,000 Americans with blood cancer are searching for their life-saving marrow match? Can you even believe that? I mean, people need marrow, you guys, and we have it. So here's how we can help. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is swab your cheek. Then go to Gift of Life Marrow Registry. It's so easy, anyone can do it. And in case you're wondering, if you're a match, donating, it's a lot easier than you think. So wherever you are, go ahead and swab that cheek. Go to giftoflife.org and get a free kit sent to your home or find a donor drive in your area so that you can swab a cheek and save a life. It's only a minute of your time, but it can give someone else the rest of their life. Welcome back. You're listening to The Secrets of Success. I'm your host, Bill Horan, and today we're speaking with Wes Berry, author of Big Things Have Small Beginnings. Wes, you were just telling us how you actually took your family flower business from $60,000 a year to a point of $60 million, if I have the numbers correctly. Um, you talk about small things. What small things, if you, you know, reflecting back on that period of time, what small things would you give the most uh, priority to? Um, I think, uh, you know, you're, you really have to shape your attitude. Everything that happens can either be construed positively or negatively. And it's up to you to decide whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. And people have a hard time with that. I, I don't know about, about everyone's experiences, but, you know, early in, in life, or earlier on, I had a marriage that, was, that failed and I got divorced. And when I got divorced, I thought it was the worst thing that happened. But I came to find out that it was the best thing that happened. Because if I hadn't married my wife now, I wouldn't have my four sons. I wouldn't have the family. You know, it's, it's hard, but you can find positive in any situation if you're willing to look for it. And that's what you have to do. That's what you have to capitalize on. And that's exactly what I did when my dad said, you can do anything you want. You just can't spend any money. Well, I found that there was something good in what, what that was about. Now, Wes, uh, did I recall uh, somewhere, I think it was in Chapter 6, if I'm right, you sat down with a mentor, am I right? I did. Um, you know, mentors don't have to be somebody you see every week on Tuesday. Sometimes they can breeze in and out of your life um, like, like you can't believe. But there was a fellow, Leo Harwood. He was a, uh, a Rotarian and a Mason and a really a great guy. I got to know him a little bit. But he had been uh, uh, in World War II, and he landed on a beach, and he got machine gunned. It had like 40 machine gun bullets or so in, in him. And they thought he was going to die. And if he didn't die, that he'd never walk again. He told me that that was the best thing that ever happened to him. Now, you know, that's somebody who really understands the power of positive thinking. Because he, his take on it was that it gave him such a challenge to overcome that it mustered so much energy within him that he became a very successful man. And when I met him, he, you know, he, he was, he looked like a lumberjack. I mean, you couldn't even possibly think that this man was ever considered lost. It's just amazing that, uh, you know, from the stories that come out of there and that he would think how positive that was. Didn't he say something to you, literally write down your goals, carry them around with you and touch them, feel them? 
Absolutely. You know, I, I, you, I write them down I put it in as few words as possible because I learned my lesson with, my, with that, that blonde in the red dress <laughs> one. You write it down as, 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 with as few words as you can so you don't lock yourself in to the wrong answer. And put it in your wallet. And occasionally you might look at it, but leave it in your wallet and your subconscious will help you work on that. Have you ever bought a car and all of a sudden you start seeing the car that you just bought everywhere? Absolutely. The color yep. Wow. How does that happen? It happens because your subconscious is helping you. And sometimes you can assign a project to your subconscious. And that's what we I'm talking about when you put it on a little card. The same thing happens when you're someplace and you can't remember somebody's name. You want to remember his name, but you can't remember it. And you say to yourself, I know as soon as I get home or as soon as I walk out the door, that name's going to pop in my head and I'm going to remember it. Well, guess what? That's you assigning a project to your subconscious. So your subconscious is going through all those dusty file cabinets in your head and looking for the answer. And you'd be amazed at how many people have no clue of the power that they can harness by just by having a little focal point on something. I wrote. I took a rock one time and just put the date on it. Didn't tell anybody what it was about. Used it as a paperweight on my desk. But that rock represented to me a decision that I made. I decided that I couldn't work any harder than I was working, but I was going to make more money than I'd been working. And I, I never even said it out loud. But I'd look at that rock every day on my desk. I didn't have to go through the whole story. Didn't have to think about it. That would just give me the little snap so that I would focus my energies on getting a decent margin and growing my business. These are the exact tips we're looking for on The Secrets of Success. And, Wes, uh, we just want to remind people that if they're just tuning in, that they're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Our guest today is Wes Berry. He has written a book entitled Big Things Have Small Beginnings, and I'm certainly enjoying the show. I hope you are. Wes, can you tell us a website where we can find out more and where the book is available? Sure. You can visit my personal website at wesleyberry.co. It's wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y, Barry, B-E-R-R-Y, dot C-O. Or you can go straight to Amazon. And uh, if you put in my name or put in Big Things Have Small Beginnings, you'll have our book show up. And right now, it's in about its, uh, I don't know, let's see, probably about almost its seventh week or so of being uh, on the bestseller list on Amazon. So we're real happy with the results on it. We've we've sold several thousand copies, and um, we're getting real good feedback on it. And I'm going to give that spoiler alert again. Go right to Chapter 6, because I know that motivated me when I saw how West took that business from 60,000 to 6 million. Now, certainly it wasn't overnight, but it was doing some of the small things that he talks about in the book. And I'd also like to remind our audience that if you didn't catch the whole show, you can always go to nccradio.org. That's nccradio.org. Go to podcast and go to Secrets of Success. And you can listen to the show at your leisure. You can listen to it time and time again when you need a little motivation. And uh, definitely go out and get a copy of... Big Things Have Small Beginnings by our guest, Wes, B-E-R-R-Y, Wes Berry. Wes, um, you talk about setting goals, and you say nothing makes sense till the goal gets established. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. It's, you know, the, it, you, I'm sure you everybody's heard an expression similar to that if you don't know where you're going, you probably won't get there. Exactly. <laughs> And goals don't have to be great big books of, of, of information and battle plans. And, you know, no battle plan ever survives, uh, you know, the test of combat. So, you know, you, ha- you have to be willing to, to move forward on, on a project based upon a little bit of faith, too. And how many times do you have, well, you know, th- just a few weeks ago, a week or so ago, I bet an awful lot of people made New Year's resolutions. I don't know how many of them can even remember what it was now, but if they can remember what it was, they're probably almost already starting to abandon them. But if you write it down, it transforms it from a, from a wish to a goal. And when you do that, then you can start laying in the other tasks that are necessary to accomplish. And you could even start putting in target dates to accomplish those tasks and that you know that if you 
past this mile marker and that mile marker, you'll get to this destination. But very few people are willing to actually make that little bit of a commitment. Sometimes it's just because they're scared that even if they promise themselves and if it doesn't turn out, that they'll feel embarrassed or uh, unsuccessful or whatever. But you just have to understand that, again, it's that same thing. Winning and losing are the same game. And your goal should be to stay in the game. Because in this country, you can keep playing that game as long as you need to. It's like a coin. Every time you flip it, it may come up differently. And one side may be good, one side may be bad. But here, we can keep flipping that coin as many times as we need to. Because nobody's going to hold you down. And Except yourself. Wes, does it matter if we don't have all the details? If, if we want to set a goal, do we need the whole plan from the beginning, or can that come along the way? It, it can come along the way, but you do need to have some of the fundamentals. For example, if you want to build a big business, and the, the enterprise that you're considering doesn't have any features to it that allow it to be scalable, you're going to have a problem. So you have to do some analysis on it. But you, if you make too many decisions before you start, that doesn't always get you where you need to go either. You know, you may say, I know the path I need to go from A to B, but along the way there's going to be potholes. Along the way there may be traffic jams. Along the way there may be, you know, other obstacles that are going to come in your way. And you have to be flexible enough to find the right detour and not being afraid of it. Not giving up because of it either. We tell our audience every week that if you want to get on that pathway to success, you have to take action. It's great that we can tell you and interview wonderful authors like Wes Berry and find out how he became successful, but you have to go up there and do something yourself, get in the game, and take that risk. What's the big deal? What's going to happen if it doesn't turn out 100% the way you like it. You've heard Wes's story. Um, I think it's time to get off the seat, do something, and make this the best year of your life. Wes, we want to thank you so much. But before we wrap up, again, we want our audience to know our author who we're speaking to today is Wes, B-E-R-R-Y. The book is Big Things, Have Small Beginnings. And the website, please? is wesleyberry.co, C-O. Easy enough to remember. And where can we get the book? Uh, the best place probably to pick it up is at Amazon, and it's available in uh, as a as a uh, as an ebook or Kindle book, as well as in a soft cover. And by neck by the middle of next week, the audio book will be out, and the hardcover will be out before the end of January. I love those audio books; it makes it so easy for us and uh, makes our pathway to success as simple as possible. Wes, thanks so much for being with us today. We'd like to remind our audience that you've been listening to the Secrets of Success on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.